there, welcome back to Summer Art Club. Today we're going to be creating an oil pastel and watercolor painting that's inspired by plants and bugs that can be found outside in our backyard or a local park. We're going to start with a fun experimental painting to learn the basics. We'll be talking a lot about mark making, lines, shapes, and patterns today. Mark making describes the many ways that you can make a line or a mark on your paper. Let's see how many different kinds of marks we can make with our oil pastels on this watercolor paper. Some polka dots, lines that then are stripes, and then can be crosshatched. How about some circles drawn close together and then layered with another color? For this line, try twisting the pastel around in your fingers as you draw. What a wonky line that produces. For this line, press hard on the pointy edge of the pastel and slowly tilt it to the flat edge as you move along. The line gets wider as you go. Try out some U shapes. Keep going and they start to kind of look like fish scales. Try out some radiating lines. They spread out from a center point. Some sharp jagged type lines and some big zigzags. Some overlapping ovals. And how about some X's? Let's finish off with some stripes. Now let's get out our watercolor paint. Remember that you need to use a lot of water with watercolor paint. Thin, transparent washes of color is the name of the game. You'll notice when you paint the watercolor paint over the oil pastels, the oiliness resists the watery paint. So the paint only goes where the oil pastel isn't. Here when I paint the dark purple color on top of the yellow oil pastel, you can see it quite clearly. That's because there's a lot of contrast between these two colors. If, for example, you paint green paint on top of green oil pastel, you won't get as varied of an effect. Try out a bunch of colors and experiment. This project is all about learning what your tools can do. Okay, looks good. I'm going to let this dry and move on to our Bugs and Blooms drawing. The best way to work on your drawing is to head outside and draw from what is right in front of you. Bring your paper, pencil, eraser, and a board or large book for underneath to create a hard surface to draw on. Move around outside and look for interesting things to add to your drawing. You don't have to draw the whole outside, and you don't have to draw every leaf and stem. Pick out a few of them that you like and just try and draw those. If you'd rather draw something else outside that tickles your fancy, then draw that. When you're working on drawing a flower or leaf or even a bug, take a look at the thing's main shape. Is it round, kind of oval, or quite sharp? Do the lines radiate out or go straight up and branch out like an umbrella? Really use your eyes to see what's in front of you. You'll be surprised just how much is really there. I'm going to start with drawing a few of these pink flowers called flocks. Take a look at the petals. There are only five, and they are kind of flat with a little hole in the center. I'm going to try drawing a few of them facing different directions. I've started with the center point and then lightly drawn a circle around it to help me figure out where the petals will end. Now take a look at the leaves on these plants. They're kind of long and oval with a point at the end. They're not really spiky though. Long, flat, and smooth. Now let's take a look at these daisies. They kind of remind me of fried eggs. Try and get your center in and then start to work on the petals radiating outwards. Try drawing some petals tucked underneath other ones. If you want to draw some detail, go ahead, but it might not show too well once we get the oil pastels and watercolor paint out. Now, I've seen rabbits eating these daisies, but they only like to eat the white petals. I think I'll draw this one flower that's missing some petals. It looks kind of odd, but that's what I like about it. Remember, Summer Art Club kids, when you really look at your subject, you start to learn so much more about it, seeing and adding all the surprising parts makes for a really interesting drawing. This Echinops, also known as Globe Thistle, has a little honeybee in it. Let's watch it work for a minute.
Let's draw in the basic shape, a big circle. Then I want to draw this sharp leaf. That's where the thistle part of its name comes from, I guess. To tell the truth, I found this part a bit tricky. There are many tiny purple flowers all connected to form a ball of flowers. Each of the little flowers looks like tiny trumpets with five thin petals. There are too many to draw each one, so I'm going to try and draw the gist of it. I'm going to repeat small flowerish shapes around the circle till it's filled in. Now for a close up. Let's add in that bee. Take a look at how fuzzy it is. Compare how long the wings are to the body. Count how many legs you see. And again, look for those basic shapes. This one has three main pieces. Go ahead and draw them. I'm going to get started on another flower, this pretty red Rudbeckia. Its shape is similar to the daisy, but the petals are a bit shorter and wider, and they kind of have tattered edges. I have no idea why. Let's give this Rudbeckia a little friend, just tucked behind. These echinaceas, or cone flowers, look cool. I'm going to add a few of these too. Remember to start with your basic shapes. The middle spiky cone part is shaped kind of like a jujube, -jube, and then the petals attached to the bottom look almost like a skirt. The petals also kind of look like floppy noodles, pinched at the top and flared at the bottom. Have fun drawing in all those spikes. That's a pretty pink rose. Oh, take a look at the spider enjoying a snack. Maybe we can try incorporating the spider and its lunch into our drawing. Remember to capture the basic shapes. Those long legs need to be drawn in for sure. And now for the web. When you're outside, try and find a spider web so you can really see how they put it together. They're always works of art. Start with the strands that radiate outwards and then connect them up with lines in between. I'm going to add just a few more flowers, including this thistle. Can you spot the bee that has managed to land on a soft spot? Be careful. For the last flower, I'm going to add in one of these graceful fall anemones. With their green center ringed with yellow and their white petals, they're pretty fabulous. Okay, I think this drawing is done. Let's get out the oil pastels. A quick tip. Any part of your painting that you want to keep white, it's best to color it in with white oil pastel, like I'm doing with the petals of this daisy. For the pink flocks, I'm going to outline the flowers, but not color them in. In purple pastel, I'm going to draw in all those little trumpet shapes, again! And let's get the bee outlined in oil pastel too. The Rudbeckia petals can be two colors, red with a ring of orange on the tips. These short orange and brown lines are trying to show how spiky the echinacea's center was. We can outline the petals now too. What about those spiky sharp thistles? Let's really show those spikes. For the anemone, I will also color in all of the petals with white, 
just like the daisy earlier. For the spider, I'll draw it in with black, but for the web, I'll use white. It can be a bit hard to see, but it'll be worth it when we get out the paints. Just do your best. Now we can get out our watercolor paints again and start painting. Try and keep your paintbrush loose in your hand. Let the paint kind of go where it wants. Enjoy watching the paint bubble up and roll off of the pastel. Paint in some of the petals and leaves if you like. The paint doesn't just have to be in the background. I chose this dark purple to help make the white lines of the spider web show. Just keep on trucking and enjoy the process. It sometimes helps to change the angle of your paper to paint a certain area more easily. Well, that's about it. Thanks for joining me and hope you had a great time. Remember to sometimes stop and really look at things when you're outside. Nature is always busy and is full of interesting surprises. See you later.